All right, right now, I'm sickened. Welcome to Riot City, first of all. Second of all, you better listen to Three Count Podcast. Oh, by the way, Showtime, Jeremy Grimes. to another great edition of the three count podcast presents now entering the ring i'm your host clifford red dog miller and uh you know we have a new person on the roster today you have seen this man he's had his own episode we've also brought him back in his tag team you know he is a man from pure ignorance he is the muscle of the group and give it up for the man himself prince machiavelli always a pleasure glad to be on the roster and i'm looking forward to this hey yeah me too man so with that being said, this is now Enter the Ring, which means one thing, we got a special guest for you. This man can be found at FSW. You can find him at WCWC. You can find this man at PPW, and you can find <laughs> this man on 3PWA. This is the man himself. Give it up for Cutthroat, Cody Hancock. What's going on, guys? It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me, and uh, as of right and now, uh, I appreciate you taking the time to look up all the promotions that I've worked for, but almost all of them are defunct other than Future Stars Wrestling. Um, and unfortunately, I no longer work for WCWC, but they are still a tremendous company, and I strongly urge that everybody support them. Hey, we should <laughs> we should be supporting everybody on the independent scene. That's what matters. 100 fucking percent. I hope it's okay that I cuss. That's, yeah, it's 100 <laughs> Absolutely. Got, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> I, I got I got a potty mouth, but no, 100%. And that's what this is really about, man, is like, we got to support each other through this as best as possible. Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah, it's it's crazy to think about like what's been like, hap- well, I mean, just like with COVID, but then like all the promotions that get affected by it and everybody got to close down and then, yeah, there's a whole bunch of stuff going on, man. So, yeah, definitely. But yeah, thank you for coming on the show with us. Hey, by all means, man. Thank you. And once again, I do apologize because we are at the uh, Future Stars Wrestling Training Facility right now. There's going to be students that are going to be filing in, so I'm just going to give some nods and then I'll sit, get right back with you guys. But that's what we like to see, the initiative to come in early and put in that work, just like we do here, because even though we might not be able to train every once in a while, and we still bring on wrestlers who ask them for advice, which is exactly what this show is. So my first question for you, though, is who is Cutthroat Cody? Oh, man. Cutthroat Cody is somebody that broke into the industry that didn't really know how to uh, walk his ground. And over the years, uh, I started as Crash Test Cody, and I had to work myself out of that name and out of that character into something that I am today. Uh, I'm heavily involved with the training here at Future Stars of Wrestling. Very proud to say that um, people like Karrion Cross, uh, who is a major NXT star right now, had his uh, first few months with me, along with Impact Wrestling, uh, Chris Bay, and a slew of other people I've had the uh, opportunity to help break them into the world of professional wrestling. That's awesome, though. That's awesome. So, yeah, man. Uh, you know, but, you know, you, you talk about just getting into the business. I'm very curious, though, what brought you into the business? Uh, I was a sick kid growing up and I had a lot of health issues. And when I was 18 years old, I had to have a major lung surgery. And in retrospect of that surgery, I knew that the one thing that kind of got me through uh, the hardships of my life was professional wrestling. And I decided that after I had my lung surgery, that it was going to be something that I was going to do no matter what. And that was 12 years ago. So we're coming up on our 13th year and it it took a lot of hard work and a lot of effort, but we were able to uh, change a lot of people's opinions about myself and the wrestling industry for sure. Nice. 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 So I'm very curious. This is like, this is like one of my favorite fun questions to ask people. You said it yourself. You've been in the business for going on 13 years. What's the worst bump you've taken? worst bump I've taken um you know there's never really been there's not like a specific bump that I don't mind taking but I mean I've hurt myself I tore my rotator cuff uh giving somebody a diamond cutter from the second rope and they kind of uh chicken shitted on the way down and they didn't dismount with me and that 
put me out of wrestling for about two years. So that was, that was kind of rough. Yeah, that doesn't sound fun at all. Yeah. So I guess the other question I'm going to ask you that hopefully this will have a more lighthearted answer. What's the hardest you've been hit? <laughs> hardest I've been hit? Man, um, probably as hard as I hit motherfuckers. Like, to be honest with you, man, I, uh, I, I kind of have a reputation for being snug as a bug in a rug, if you get what I'm saying. So somebody, um, that's, um, I don't think that I've ever been, to, been hit too hard. Bad, bad. Prince, man, I'm going to ask you. Do you got some questions you want to ask? I do. Um, my first question is, for a young guy like me who um, is still kind of finding himself, what advice would you give me? Well, I mean, just take, take your training seriously. You know, like there's a lot of work that you got to do, not just in the ring, but out of the ring. Um, this is um, a very it's a very, very, very dangerous thing. Um, and conditioning and strength training and diet and like living a proper lifestyle to where you're not staying at bars until three o'clock in the morning or playing video games until four o'clock in the morning, you know, like all, all those things need to kind of be cut out. And I, one of the hardest criticisms I ever read about me was when I was doing national television for Paragon Pro Wrestling. And the reviewer of my match said that I was the definition of indie geek. And he was, he was right, 100%. I, would, I went from being very overweight when I started wrestling and then I lost a lot of weight. But all I was doing was cardio and in-ring training. I wasn't in the gym and like, working out I, my diet was pretty good but i didn't look like a wrestler i looked like a skinny kid and i've received some very hard criticisms i've been told i was too fat i've been told i was too small now i'm kind of in a situation to where i'm waiting for somebody to tell me what i'm too much of because uh it's taken a complete lifestyle change i had to stop playing online video games i had to stop going to bars i had to stop drinking um, I had to stop hanging out with my friends. Like I had to prioritize what was important to me and the big three things, right? Study your tape in ring training, out of ring training. Like that, that's my advice because if you don't, ha you can do one of those things and you can get a little bit of success, right? Mm -hmm. You can do two of those things and you can get a little bit more success, but it's the three, you got to have the three. And if you do those three things, the sky's the limit. You know, like you'll be able to bust through a lot of glass ceilings that way. 100% commitment to everything that's involved in professional wrestling. You know, like I stopped buying tickets to WWE shows. I stopped buying WWE merchandise. You know, my money went into my gym and my diet. Like that's like the, and I still love video games. Don't get me wrong but you're not going to catch me playing Fortnite until five o'clock in the morning. I, I don't have time like that. That makes sense. That makes sense. Cause actually that's currently my, as Cliff knows, uh, the other podcasters know, I am a big video game person. I'm a, I stream yep. my free time and stuff like that. So I understand. I, I, I do get what you're saying. And sometimes I sit there, I'm like, I could be doing something more productive than sitting here playing this game. So check this man. So what do you play? Call of Duty, Madden. Call of, Call of Duty, Madden. So how many? How, how long do you think that you got to wait in between games? Like, good five minutes. Good five minutes. Five minutes? Try to do 100 push-ups in five minutes. Like, that, like, I actually started a video game workout, right? So Mega Man X3 for the Super Nintendo. If you beat that game all the way through and you do everything properly, you get a uh, Ken's uh, dragon uppercut and it, you can kill all the bosses and the boss got in one hit and there ends up being about 10 bosses. So 10 push-ups, kill a boss, 10 push-ups, kill a boss, 10 push-ups, kill a boss. At the end of it, I got to play video games and I got a hundred push-ups in, you know, like we have more time than we realize, right? Yeah. You just got to make it for yourself. 
Yeah. yeah, I feel like for me, that's like one of my big things too. Like I carve out the time to like, to spend time with my friends, right? So like if I wanted to play like Call of Duty for like two hours, like I carve that time out because everything else I'm focused on doing. So like if it's not match training or match watching or ranking them for this podcast, which people see that happens all the time, or I'm in the ring two times a week, I'm in the gym four times a week, like just – it's like I'm always trying to do something to be more productive to get myself together. And I'm not gonna lie, sometimes I'll be sitting at work watching wrestling because I'm just like, oh, yeah, I like that move, I like this set, I like that. So, yeah, definitely, I feel like you know, it's if if you want to make it a priority, you're gonna make it a priority. It was something that I heard from another person that said, um, if you're looking to fight for air, you're gonna you're gonna breathe. <laughs> like, yeah, man, no, 100. percent And uh, I don't know if you guys are up on like stand up comedy at all. Uh, do you know who Patton Oswalt is? Yes. You sound familiar. Well, Patton Oswalt, um, he did a little tiny documentary. It was more like a mockumentary, and it was called The Comedians of Comedy. And he said something very profound in that documentary, and he was on a tour bus, and he said that I found that in order to be successful in what I was doing, I had to obsess over it to the point to where it was unhealthy. And like, that's one thing is that a lot of people like the idea of what being a wrestler is, but a lot of people don't have the concept of what it actually takes to be a wrestler. Um, I've been able to spend a lot of time with a lot of people that know what the fuck they're doing in this industry. And even Dr. Tom, Dr. Tom did a seminar one time a few years back with us and he laid it out and he is like, are you willing to do whatever it takes? Are, are you willing to pack up and move? Are you willing to end your relationship that's not functioning? Are you willing to change the way you eat? Are you willing to commit to sleeping? Are you willing to make those sacrifices? And if you're willing to make those sacrifices, the more that you put in, the more that you get out. But if you only put in a half measure, you're only going to get half back out of it. So it's a, it's a full commitment, man. And that's the thing too, is that it's very easy to talk to someone like me because I'm, I'm in decent shape, you know, like I'm, but at the same time, I wasn't always that way. You know, mm-hmm. I've weighed 230 pounds twice in my life and we're not talking like jacked ripped cut and shit like that. We're talking about like hot pockets at 3am with a tall boy and fucking Bud Light and playing video games while I was eating Cheetos. Like I was not fully committed. And that's something that I've had to come to terms with but I'm a thousand percent committed now and I've got a tremendous support system. I've got awesome students and I've got a girl in my life that understands everything that I have to do to be a wrestler. So it's, that's what's going to get you success in this industry. Okay. All right. I love to answer the uh, question. So my next question is what motivates, like you were saying, you, you got injured and everything like that, man. So what motivates you to keep being you and to keep pushing? I, I, I am put on this earth to prove people wrong. I'm put on this earth because any motherfucker that ever told me that I couldn't watch me now, motherfucker. That's why I keep doing what I'm doing. That's what gets me to fight back after injuries. There's a lot of people that, you know, they say that their first impression, right? First impressions are really hard to change. I've been able to change a lot of first impressions. And I will fight tooth and nail. If somebody has a, something bad to say about me, I'm going to take that away from them. And I'm going to leave them with nothing. Love that. I really do. I really love that. Um, yeah. I got a question. I'll, I'll, oh, oh. What do you think your best You're going to have to say that one more time. You cut out a little bit. I said, uh, what do you feel is the best match you've had or the you know, best opponent you've had? It's When you do this for, that, for this long, um, there's so many to mention. You know, like, I mean, I've had – there's not just one person that I've had a good match with. I've had, like – I've been doing this for a long time. I've had a lot of good matches with a lot of people. Uh, noteworthy, I had a very, very stellar feud with Funny Bone. Um, for the yeah. No Limits Championship that uh, culminated in a steel cage with weapons match that can be found on YouTube. If you just look up Cutthroat Cody versus Funny Bone Steel Cage, that match will show up on YouTube. Um, I've had 
a tremendous series of matches with Nick Bugatti, who uh, I've recently just opened up and told people that me and him are actually really good friends, but we made sure that people thought that we hated each other and we had a series of amazing matches. I just got done having a match with um, a student here named uh, Nick Xander, who had only been training for six months, but his six months is five days a week and six days a week in the gym. Like this kid's completely dedicated. And we went out and we had match of the night. And he was only six months in, but it's because he's completely dedicated. Um, I've had killer matches with a lot of people. I've had a steel cage tag match against the Bonus Boys and my tag team along with Jacob Austin Young called Death Proof. Like, all you got to do is, like, type in my name on uh, YouTube, and you can find a lot of stuff. Definitely, definitely. I've actually seen the Funny Bone match. Um, yes. I'm actually a big... SW fan, Ice Williams, one of my favorites. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Ice Williams is a uh, Ice Williams is not a character, and that's the thing that a lot of people have to understand is is that you always hear people like Stone Cold Steve Austin talking about like how the best version of themselves is just themselves, but turned up to like eleven. Ice Williams is always idling about like a twelve at all times. <laughs> Like, and he, he's awesome to have around, man. And uh, there's not one real way to success because everyone's story is different, right? You know, Ice Williams is a different guy than I am. Uh, Funny Bone is a different guy than I am. Karrion Cross, we all had very different paths into this world. And the one thing, the one intangible factor, though, is you got to learn how to do it. You know, you got to learn how to work in the ring that's one of the most important things in the world because you can have a character and you can have a gimmick and you can have an idea and it ain't going to mean shit if you got two left feet in a wrestling ring, you know, like it's very, very important, but yeah, man, like I'm very proud of this company and I'm glad that you're watching some stuff because it's um, for me, I think that one of my biggest challenges right now is how do I extend myself to different markets that are outside of the West coast? You know, I, I really want people in the East coast to know, what FSW is and who's down here. And that's like kind of one of my driving forces right now in wrestling. Definitely. Definitely. That, um, oh. I have. That's a, okay, cool. <laughs> so I guess for me, like here's like a couple of other questions I was just going to ask. So let's say you have a match, right? I just got to know what's the go-to meal after your match, man. It, I, I'm kind of on a bulk right now. So, I mean, I'm like eating like a dumpster. It does. I will eat whatever I fucking can. Like I, I'm really like when I'm taking care of myself, I like to eat bison. Um, like before training today, I loaded up like a big bowl of white rice, a cup of uh, uncooked spinach. And then I had, I would say, I'd say probably at least like 44 grams of protein worth of bison. Um, bison's easily digestible. Um, it's got low fat and it's high protein. Uh, and it's also one of the only like meats that you can buy in America that the FDA regulates how they treat the animal. So it has no added hormones, no fillers, no additives. Like bison is the best meat that you can buy and you can get that shit at Walmart. It is expensive, but bison is my go-to i like i like so i know every wrestler referee manager announcer commentator has one of these so i'm curious about yours what's been like one of your favorite fan interactions that you've had um there was a there was a family that used to come to fsw shows and her name was rachel it was rachel and ron and they had three children and um Rachel went and took it upon herself before I actually had merchandise. She went and bought some shirt that had like a yellow smiley face on it that had a piece of duct tape over the mouth. And the tagline of the shirt was something corny, like silence is golden, but duct tape is silver. And she took a Sharpie and she wrote CTC over the tape of the shirt and then she drew 
a little tiny caution insignia that used to be on the masks that I used to wear to the ring. And I was, I was so moved by that. And honestly, man, when I first started doing this, I really wasn't good, but I, I gave everything that I had. And even though my best wasn't as good as other people, people still saw that I was doing everything I could. And um, unfortunately, uh, Rachel ended up catching pneumonia. And this is a true story. She ended up battling it in the hospital. And then it was February 2nd, I believe of 2012. And on my birthday, we had a show and I went to the venue that night and I had discovered that she had passed away the night before. And at, they called themselves the front row mafia and they all had hats and everyone in the front row mafia would wear hats and they, um, they put the hat in her chair and they put um, a sign that she would always carry that said CTC for elite champion. And that was something that um, when you get the opportunity to do this, you end up serving a purpose that's higher than yourself. And I will always be forever moved by that because I, and I even went to her funeral and in her slideshow, um, there was pictures with me and her. Um, and I had never, I had never went over to her house. I had never, I, I would interact with her a little bit on social media and things like that, but it's not like I was like asking her as a friend, like, Hey, please, you know, that was something that she felt on her own and she went out and she did that on her own. And, uh, I have a picture of us together on my fridge to this day. Um, she was a very, very important person, not just for myself, but just for the Vegas wrestling community in general. And, uh, Ronald is remarried to a wonderful woman named Stacia and they are, they're just awesome people. And uh, we think about Rachel a lot. Yeah, that's awesome though. Really, that's yeah. really like, that's a great story to like hear about. Yeah, man. But hey, you know, these are, these are the things that you can end up doing for people. You can, when you do this and if you fully commit yourself to it, and you make those sacrifices, you get to be able to have stories like this. You know, it's um, like I said, you'll serve a purpose higher than yourself. And I think that um, that's not anything that I actively sought out, but it did become my responsibility. And it's something that I carry with a great amount of pride. That's awesome. That's awesome. So with that being said, that's kind of like all of our hard, like hitting questions, but we do have, the best segment on this show, which is the three count podcast, 10 count questions. Here's how it works. I'm going to fire off 10 questions at you. Rapid fire. First thought that comes to mind. That's your answer. So we're going to put the imaginary timer on the clock. Bing! And here we go. Smackdown or Raw? Say that? What? Smackdown or Raw? Smackdown or Raw? Oh, man, Smackdown. Sorry. Favorite movie? Favorite movie, I would say World's Greatest Dad with Robin Williams. That's a great movie. Yes. Owl or Early Bird? Um, I struggle to be de- de- both, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> Favorite actor? Favorite actor, we're going to go ahead and I'm, I'll say Robin Williams. That, I'm such a fan of his. Okay. Sonic or Mario? Sonic. Favorite buffet spot? I've never been to a buffet that I didn't get like really, really bad indigestion from. I don't really have one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Since you're in Vegas, Mandalay Bay or the Venetian? Mandalay Bay. Favorite podcast? Favorite podcast, I would say The DeFalco Files has actually been a banger from uh, Vegas Bad Boys of Podcasting. If you want to know anything about FSW, listen to that. All right, bet, bet. Nominate one person you want to see on this podcast. One person I'd like to see on this podcast? I'd like to see myself back on this podcast when I have more time to chat with you. 
Oh, definitely. That's going to be a thing. We we have to worry about that. Let, let's say Ice Williams. Okay. Oh, yeah. yes. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and then last but not least, this is my favorite question to ask every single person who comes on here. Favorite curse word? Fuck. <laughs> There's got to be a choice. Uh, so with that being said, this is the 10 count questions. And my last thing I need from you is to let our listeners and our viewers know where they can find you. All right. So I have a very sporadic Twitch channel where I actually am streaming my wrestling videotape collection. Uh, unfortunately, there's not a schedule right now, but follow me at twitch.tv slash cutthroatcody at Cutthroat Cody on Twitter and Instagram. And if you can find me on the internet, add me quick because I got 50 slots left before I've reached the friend limit on Facebook. So that's uh, just look up Cody Hancock. You'll find me. That. So there you have it. Add him quick because, you know, spots are filling up. But this is the Three Count Podcast presents Now Entering the Ring. And I'm your host, Clifford Red Dog Miller, here with the man himself, Prince Machiavelli. With that being said, like I said, this is now entering the ring here with Cutthroat Cody. And, you know, be there for the next episode and either be there or be somewhere else. <laughs> Peace. What's going on, Three Count Nation? I'm Clifford Red Dog Miller with the catchphrase. But what I really want to do right now, go to Twitter.com, right? Go over there. Find us at the three count underscore pod. Give us a follow. Give us a like. Give us a comment. We want to talk to you guys. Go to IG at the three count pod. Give us a like. Give us a follow. Leave us a comment. We want to interact with you. Go to YouTube.com. Give us a subscribe. Turn the bell on. Turn on notifications. Leave a comment. We want to talk to you. Go to anger.fm forward slash the three count podcast. And in there, you can leave us a message and we will talk to you. Basically, what I'm trying to tell you is that we want to talk to you. We want to have fun with you guys and we love listening to what you guys have to say. Also, one thing I need you to do for me, the Three Count Podcast also has merchandise. Oh! At ProWrestlingTees.com forward slash the Three Count Pod. Please go buy our t-shirts. We love you guys and we hope you love us too. So, show us some support, please.